Welcome to the Seller Roundtable e-commerce coaching and business strategies with Andy Arnott and Amy Wees. So let's talk about how to sell physical products on Facebook, right? Because, oh my gosh, so many people come to me on coaching calls and they'll just be like, so I just need to run Facebook ads, right? (laughs) And it's, it, not every product is perfect for Facebook, right? I'm sure you can get creative with some and, and get people to leave their Facebook feed and go buy from you. But, um, but let's talk about that. Like, what are some strategies for actually selling um, physical products on Facebook? Yeah, so if you want to sell physical products on Facebook, obviously, ideally, you want to sort of set up a store that you can sort of sell the product on. And I think when people are making um, a, a store you want to sell on Facebook is really think about your product pages as, as a place where people can go and really learn about your product and know everything about your product. Some things that we see people is it really depends on what stage of your business in too. Like a lot of people get inspiration from like these VC funded companies that have like these clean, beautiful landing pages. And then they're like, Oh, that's how my website's going to be like, but I'm like, okay, like they also got like $10 million in their war chest. So they can, they care if their CPA is like 200 bucks where you, you don't want, you don't, you can't afford that. So I always tell people, look at, look at your Amazon page and see how optimized that page is for sales and convert and transfer that page content and that look, that style to your own website. Um, Amazon has so much stuff on it, like images, videos, reviews, stars, guarantees, like, and, and I tell people like, look at amazon.com, like the platform that, you know, everybody knows, and they still mention like free shipping, free guarantees. Like, why do, why do you think your brand that no one knows about, that's never heard about you, doesn't need that? And that's how people are like, oh yeah, that makes sense. I'm like, yes, like give people these guarantees, give people reviews. Like, why would I come from like Kevin.com when I've never heard about this store? And Amazon.com, the biggest company in the world still has this stuff. So I just say like, just think about the, the customer from a customer point of view. Like, how can you guarantee that they're gonna make the best decision? So. Number one is have a great product page with images, video, reviews, testimonials, all that stuff that you're going to do. And then just make your checkout um, really, really tight and, and like security badges and seals. I think you need that really well. Um, and then I, get, I think the number one thing that another thing that I think people need to sort of sell online is great images, of course. Like if you have Amazon images, you can use those. But I think the, another, the most important thing is going to be like great copywriting on the product page. Why should people buy your product? similar to like a creative for an ad, you can't just say, Hey, look, buy my t-shirt, right? You need to say like, okay, what's your t-shirt made out of? What's the benefits? What, how's it going to be helpful for a user? Um, so I think that's super important where what I'm seeing right now is people have like two cent descriptions of like their stuff. I'm like, no, like, why isn't like you can, like I tell people, if your website, you control it more than you control your Amazon page. So add more stuff, add more images, add more graphs, anything that you can make a, a prospect convert. Um, so that's sort of where I, I, that's sort of like, I think where you would start is a really good product page where you can come in and be like, okay, I trust this. Let me try the product. Now, do you think there is, I mean, an issue with trust? So would you recommend when they're first trying to really make conversions that they run those ads to their Amazon page, or would you recommend their own website? I still, I would still do your, your own website just because that, that will actually show you if people are going to buy the product and convert on your store. And if you're not getting conversions, obviously this is the, that's always the problem. Okay. What is it? Is it my store or is it my ads or is it targeting? So it's like, you're in this loop of what is it? Um, but I think it's, if you have a store and you're first starting out is I think it's always really helpful to have like some sort of customer support number or some sort of like online chat that customers can potentially ask questions and that will give you some insights into what they're thinking or why they're not buying. So that's another way, way to like debug it. But also going back to kind of what we were saying before is adding stuff like Hotjar, which allows you to sort of track your users throughout your website. That also gives you insights into maybe why they're not converting, right? So sometimes you'll see like, okay, they're going to the returns page. Maybe they're skeptical about shipping. So maybe you should now add that content to your, to your, to your, to your product page. That way they don't have to go. Um, I always tell people like, the number one, like if you look at any product online, like let's, let's, the most searched term on Google is probably like product name reviews. That means, that means they weren't convinced that first time. So they're looking for validation. So you want to val- make sure that they're validated that first time they come to your, to your page. That means reviews, uh, quotes, like 
So anybody that endorsed your product, put it on there. Like, don't make them go hunt for it. Making them go hunt for it just means you're going to lose money that first time. And then, of course, as like anybody knows that sells product online, they're going to go for coupons, right? Blah, 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 coupons, right? So then, like, you're just constantly, like, in this loop of losing money because there are people are going out. So if you have a coupon, just put it out there. You know people are going to search for it. So, like, why are you going to make them go to, like, another site? Right. <laughs> so, right. so, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and then in terms of actually selling those physical products, like, getting somebody to actually click your ad because I see so much clutter on Facebook when it comes to physical product ads. Yep. And I don't want to leave Facebook to go yeah. to somebody's website for some widget that I don't care yeah. about. Right. So in terms of actually getting them to click, we know once yeah. they click, we got to have something good. Otherwise yeah. we're going to spend money on clicks that don't convert. But what do we do on Facebook to get them to click? How do we get them to come to our website and visit yep. our product page? And I think, uh, yeah, so for that, I think you really want to go with what we see work really well still to get someone to click is, is a testimonial ad of someone talking about your product or just like opening unboxing videos. Those work really well to show that like, hey, this is actually a real thing. Um, so this is, I think just like if you have a product, just like maybe you, your friend or somebody just have them open it and you record it and then show that with a testimonial. Like, Hey, I got this in like two, three days. It really, it helps me with like clear my skin, for example. Um, those work really well to sort of peak curiosity and then click, they make them click on your product. Sort of see, okay, cool. Like at least I can see that, you know, this is actually delivered. So it goes with the skepticism of like, people are scared to like buy products and like saying, Hey, am I ever going to get it? Right. So yeah. Versus that, all like the drop shipping video yeah. ads. I think too many of us have fallen for one of those and got a yep. crap product. And, you know, so now we see this cool video yep. um, on Facebook showing this product, but it's not personal. And if it's not personal, if it's just somebody, you know, yeah. do you, if it's just like, you know, somebody playing with a cat with this cat toy and you're like, um, yeah, yeah. I'm not buying that, man. I'm not doing that again. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. And then the free shipping, it's like, who falls for yeah, the, for free the just, shipping, play, yeah. just pay shipping like that one. Yeah. Nobody falls for that crap anymore. It's like, yeah, it's like, come no on, one, yeah, guys. everybody knows what you're trying to do with that. Just pay shipping or like free, free. And then it's like, oh, wait, it's actually like $10 to ship it. Yeah. Something like that. So I love yeah. that, you know, get, bring some personality to it. Show them yep. that, you know, you're a real person and you know, you have that. Um, show, yeah, yeah. Show like, show something that's real that like the product looks real. Don't just like, I tell people like static, like static images work well. Yes. But like, if you can just talk about it and like, when you talk about it, I just say like, you, your founder, or you, someone in the company, just like mention the problem. Like, Hey, do you have dry skin? Well here, like my name is Kevin. This, I found the solution and maybe go into like a two second backstory about why, like growing up, I had a lot of acne growing up. So this led me to discover this thing. Let me show you what it is now. So it's like, people need to think about it like a movie, like it's, but like it's very short, like 30 second movie. Yeah. Yeah. And in those videos, how important is it to have the text at the bottom of the video? Oh yeah. I, I tell people you need to have that text, like either hard coded in or like transcribed on Facebook because a lot of people are just like scrolling without like turning on the audio and like, and it doesn't, it's not just because people turn it off. It's because sometimes I just don't want to listen to it. Like, I'm just like in, like, I'm just like, Oh, I don't yeah. want to listen to stuff today. And you, but the stuff is still interesting. So you'll still want to see what it says. And it's not because people will tell you like, Oh, like I never listen to stuff on Facebook. I'm like, I do both. I do both. So like sometimes I do, sometimes I don't it kind of depends on the mood. Right. <laughs> so. And what about landing pages? So, you know, when you're selling um, a physical product or service, whatever on Facebook and, you've got this ad and you're going to a product page, are you using landing pages in between there? And what are some good strategies for those? Yeah, I think, I think people need, should be using landing pages. So we're working with like an outdoor gear company and basically depending on your audience. So like depending on the audience that you're selling to, I think you should have a great landing page that just for you to pre-sells them about like, and this goes back to sort of like storytelling or, or basically saying like, what is your unique, problem or sort of like, what is your, what is your product solve that's unique and how does it solve it in a different way? Um, or, and then sort of like really, uh, making sure your messaging resonates with their persona that you're advertising on Facebook. Right. So you can sell a product on Facebook, for example, on like a Shopify store, but usually the description is pretty generic. Right. But with a landing page, you can say like, Hey, look, um, with this product, it's really for like, you know, 50 plus, if you have like joint pain, health issues, that, that sort of language is going to be very different than for example, this company tracking polls. When we sell like the tracking polls for like a 50 plus audience, we talk about joint pain, walking longer. But when we sell to a younger audience, we talk about, hey, going hiking with your friends, exploring the territories. It's a very different type, but the product still solves two different 
issues, but that's why a landing page beforehand really helps sort of pre-frame them saying, Hey, I'm making the right decision now and go buy. Um, I Got think, it. yeah. So a lot of, a lot of, a lot of times when I, we talk to business owners, it's like they want to do for everything, which is great. Your product can be for everything, but like in, in that everything, what are the pockets that we can make landing pages or content that just describes that person? So you're like warming up that audience increasing that trust even more like okay i do want to learn more about that and then they get there and they read more about it and they're like oh wow yeah i would like less joint pain when i'm out walking yeah i think i'm gonna this is the right decision and then you're taking them right to the checkout page exactly so you don't have to worry about them shopping around the side or anything like that or yeah and, and like yeah exactly and the thing is like everybody wants people to like shop around but like that's just distraction. Just make them go through the process and then through your email marketing, through your retargeting campaigns, show them more product. Um, saying, right. oh, by the way, did you know we also had this? By that time, they already purchased that first product because you don't want them to like potentially buy more things or if they do, it's great. But that's your first point should be just to get that customer through like that one, two, three. Okay, now let me call and try to sell you more stuff. So. And is there a particular landing page software that you like to use? So at least here we use Unbounce a lot, but Unbounce is great. Um, but like, obviously if you're doing like funnel stuff, click funnels is also great too. Um, so, but yeah, it's like, depending on what you're doing. So usually kind of what we're doing right, right now is like, let's say we're building these funnels, we're testing them out and seeing what's working. Um, what we usually do after is just convert those funnels into like HTML pages. That way they load fast. That way it's like, no, like Unbounce and like click funnels, they all have like a bunch of software that just loads behind the scenes. But once we know what's working, we just convert to static pages and then that helps with the load time. And then we're now we're just driving traffic. Got it. Awesome. <clears throat> Excuse me. I should have done that before I unmuted. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, what are, what are, ter- uh, what's working in terms of, of, um, ad formats? So, um, in terms of your clients, um, you know, are you seeing the best results with like video image, uh, yeah. long form, um, you know, kind of what, what I know for a while there, it was like, people were just being like, you know, natural looking like selfies, like, yeah. thing, look at me, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like making it look natural. Um, but everybody's doing that now. So that's kind of getting washed out too. Like what, what are you seeing that's working really well? What's working really well now is our videos, of course, is always doing really well. Like the one by ones, like the square videos, but what we're seeing work really well now is still like the vertical ads, like for like Instagram stories, uh, Facebook stories, those vertical ones are working really well. And then going back to uh, what we were talking about before, what's also working really well is like just having captions and text overlays on top of things. When like you're sort of like trying to explain something or a problem so people can say visually and also uh, text, like, text wise see it as well. So we st- we'll see, see those work really well. But going back on, on like, let's say for remarketing, remarketing, it's those natural looking videos that look like someone just kind of open up their phone and like a potato camera was like attack them. And it's like, Oh, like what's this blurry grainy video? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, it's like, Oh, why is it so blurry? We actually see those work really well. Another thing that actually worked really well. is kind of funny. And is when you like purposely misspell something, cause then people will comment and Hey, that's spelled wrong. And then like that will get your engagement up on Facebook. So then you're getting more comments or more likes and that just puts boosts you in the algorithm. So we've done it like not on purpose, but now we're just like, Oh, it actually works really well when you do it on purpose too, because like, so, yeah, so it's like, yeah, it's like pretty funny actually. Like you do it on purpose. We're like, oh my God, it's spelled wrong. How could you do that? But that just means that like other people will boost your, boost yeah. your thing. Yeah, I've you. seen that. The, the other thing that I've noticed that worked really well is uh, a couple of years ago um, uh, for one of our Amazon uh, related SaaSs, we had actually found cups. Um, they were, um, I forget who the company was, but they were cups, but the cups looked like... <laughs> And I'm sorry, but this yeah. is episode 69. So it actually relates perfectly. The cups looked like penis heads, <laughs> like when yep. they were filled with liquid and we ended up using them as an ad and we got like, I mean, we were getting conversions for like five cents because it, it got so much organic, natural, like just with the little boost of, of the ads, we were getting so much, um, uh, uh, you know, natural engagement because people being like, Oh my God, that looks like, you know, and yeah, yeah. so you'd be like, I don't see it. And then like, it was just like these crazy the comments. Yeah. And, um, you know, that is a good tip to, to use is like, if you see, um, like what I love to do is just like scroll through social media. When I scroll through shows, social media now, I ignore most of the content. I actually look at ads mostly because I don't want to, I don't want to look at politics. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. look at COVID. I don't uh, like whatever. You're not going to change my mind. I'm not going to change yours. That's kind of where I'm at right now. You know? So, um, 
So I just scroll through all that stuff, but I love to look at like ads or things that like I see a ton of comments for. Um, and then I'll look and see like, why are people interacting with this? And then, yeah, a lot of times it, it's negative, but you know, the old saying that like uh, any, any, any kind of uh, any news is good news or whatever, you know, it's like, if you can get like, even if it's a negative in terms of, you know, on your brand, like it might get seen by so many people and, and a lot of those people might have a negative effect, but a lot of them might not. So it's, it's super fun to just test those kinds of ideas. Um, the other thing people want to go check out is the Facebook ad library. That's where I also get a mm -hmm. ton of great ideas. I think it's facebook.com slash ad slash library. And uh, you can type in a keyword or, you know, uh, a brand or anything like that and see what they've been running, see how long it's been running for. You can get a ton of great ideas um, um, that way. So uh, anyway, back to um, Amazon. Uh, do you have any, uh, do you do any link building? Like, so, so a lot of people don't know about this and a lot of people don't utilize it, but you can actually build backlinks to Amazon products in, in terms of, you know, around the internet that, which will give your um, Amazon page, some, some, uh, some organic SEO juice on Google. Do you do any of that for your products or your clients? Yeah. So we, we do it for our stuff because exactly what you're saying. We use yeah. so no, very few people yeah. do. That's yeah. why it's kind of a secret. Shh. Yeah. And the reason why it works is like, it's like Amazon's such a high domain authority that you can yep. literally build a few links and uh, it like pops, we call it yep. like pops up in the SERPs. Totally. Um, yep. We use, so uh, when I was doing it, we used to use like GSA. I'm not sure if you're like, yeah, yep. cool. uh, yeah, yeah, the automation. Yeah, it, that's not working as well <laughs> yeah. anymore. And there was yeah. a what's the other one? GSA, and then there was also uh, like, X, uh, like uh, some other Russian one. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, I, I've used yeah. literally like any yeah. type of marketing automation tool I've, yeah. I've probably used because yeah. I love that. I love not having to hire a VA and still blast out as much stuff as possible. Blast out so. all these links. Yeah, I'm like, okay, yeah, exactly. give me all these, give me all these article links. Exactly. And it's like, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean like, and the reason why, I mean like when I was doing it, it worked really well just because like amazon.com is never going to get penalized because it's just like such a high domain authority exactly. and, it, and it just works. It just like wants links. Um, but that's like, the way we've done it before, but that's another great way to sort of do it. And it's sort of, so, and also works great for like, just like search engine. It's like what, or um, what's it called? Where like you can control like the top results for your stuff because you're purposely, um, reputation management of uh, like your search. Yeah. 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 So, oh, excuse me. So yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. That, so awesome. I've done it like that. Yeah, and it definitely works. And I tell people you should do it. Like, yeah, because then it, it's yeah, it's it's funny how little people are, are, few people are doing it. I mean, some of the big brands have figured it out, but you know, there's not a ton of people. Uh, doing and then that. yeah, and also like another thing too, it's like let's say you like kind of what we're talking about before with coupons or reviews. I tell everybody you should have a slash reviews page or a slash coupons page because your domain is going to rank higher than like all third party sites. So it's like Kevin's coupons. That's probably going to rank higher than like you know whatever. Um, honey.com or one of those other things. So, yeah, totally. So um, instead of like giving them credit and then obviously the, then the other thing too is like now the attribution isn't messed up. So then now it's like single domain attribution. Yep, absolutely. Um, on that same note, um, you know, th this is a little more advanced stuff, uh, but <laughs> Um, in terms of like customer journey, so like for, for my, you know, I love to use my, my wife, uh, my wife's ads as a, an example, because that's where I'm really digging in on Facebook right now. But like, so I, I have like when, when they go through the journey of her funnel, right? Like the first thing I don't count as a conversion, like, cause we're just getting the basic info. Then the next one, um, you know, it's a little bit more like the email. And then the last one is like the phone number, but I won't count that as a conversion unless we get the phone number right because that's like the strongest lead that's how we can actually like get people um so can you can you kind of explain uh you know how to use the customer journey to to uh in e-commerce to get kind of a a better idea of what um you know what what people can get uh or what people how people can increase their conversions by actually tracking that journey yeah so yeah it's a great question so basically the way you want to think about it is like with facebook pixel is Facebook has like these standard events they're called where it'll track some sort of action that you have. Um, and if, you have your, if you're on their dashboard on Facebook, you can actually see all these conversions happening in real time when you're driving traffic. So when you have your homepage, it's like a page view. But then when you go into like a product page, it's now called view content. View content just basically means, hey, they viewed the product. Um, so now if they view the product and it sort of resonates with them, most likely most people have like an add to cart. So then they click on that. And that goes to your add to cart page, which is usually like a slash card. So on this page, then that will lead to like a checkout page, which is like now called like initiate checkout, meaning, okay, something started happening here. And then once they type in the information, then it'll go to like, usually like a thank you page. So that's like the whole sort of journey that you can see through Facebook. 
And ideally for anybody doing this, you want to be tracking this. And this could mean that many different things wherever you're doing, but this is how it works for e-commerce. Um, so kind of what you'll, you'll, what you'll notice is obviously like you'll drive a thousand people and then, you know, maybe 10 will buy. So that means you have like a 10% conversion rate. So then in between there, between the view content, add to cart, initiate checkout, people dropped off. Um, so then as someone like an e-commerce store owner, that's why I really like using something like Hotjar where you can actually see where they're dropping off and what's causing the drop off, right? So if your drop off is that you have a thousand view contents and no add to carts, that means you're either, probably your add to carts broken. So you should probably check that out because someone at least is gonna try to see what's gonna happen when they add to cart because sometimes people are just curious. <laughs> like, oh, let me see what happens. Like, right. even though like you've added 20,000 things in your cart every day, but, yep. um, but yeah, so like you can use this as a way to sort of gauge it. And then I like using just heart jar and sort of seeing how you can improve those metrics over time. Like if your view content is high, but then no one's on the cart, okay, maybe change your images, maybe add some reviews, maybe change your product description. And then once right. your e e-commerce typically what we're seeing is anywhere between like two to 3%, if it's like a standard website um, for just e-commerce. And then, then you sort of go to the add to cart page. And this is like an optional page. Sometimes people have this, sometimes people don't. I kind of like to, to remove it just because it's adding an extra step for no reason. It's just like, um, yep. Hey, like here's what's in your cart. I'm like, do I really want to see it? I know what I added. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I mean, just look at Amazon, right? Like yeah. they, they have the, the, they're the pioneers yeah. of the one click, one click buy, right? Like the yeah. less friction, the better. It's just like for websites, right? Like if you're trying to get a lead, um, you know, it's so funny. I'll go to a website and they're like, what's your name? What's your address? What's your phone? Like, yeah. no, dude, you're, you, yeah. you have an email address and you hit That's enter. It, yeah. And then if you want more on the second page of the form, you prompt them for more stuff, but yeah, you want less friction, right? The least amount of friction possible to either get the customer or get that data. And yep. um, yeah, you made a great, great point there. I mean, one of the things uh, you know, that you guys can test um, on your own website, which a lot of people don't think of is, you know, more, normally people on their own website will charge shipping. Right. Yep. Um, but a, a tactic to, to try is to raise the price on your website. Right. So instead like if you're selling on Amazon, 14 99, sell it on your own website for 19 99, but then offer free shipping, right? Test that. Cause shipping is one of the biggest things that deter people from buying your product. Right. So if you're offering that free shipping, uh, as well, but you, you, you know, raise the price a little bit, um, that's a great tactic along with having a button to Amazon from that product. Like, Oh, you don't want to buy on from our website. Here's the link to buy this product on Amazon. You know, you trust Amazon. So you're getting a sale either way, but you're getting a pixel. Them. You might, you know, capture their email address. If they're going to Amazon, you can give them a coupon. There's so many cool things that you can do, um, on your own website in conjunction with Amazon. Yeah. And like what we'd like to do with like similar to like that Amazon tactic that you just mentioned, usually what we like to say is like, if we know like they're exiting the page, like an exit pop-up, We'll say, hey, actually, you can buy it on Amazon. And right. Then take right, that right, right. directly. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because you want to give them every chance. Like, if they, because trust, right? Trust is like you were saying with the security badges and all that. Like, if people haven't heard of your brand, that's why small brands have such a hard time selling on their own website, right? Is because they're not, they, they don't have that intrinsic trust built in. But, if you after it, like, uh, offer it, like you said, as an afterthought or even as an email, right? If you capture their email and they don't buy, you can say, hey, you know, you can send a, a fire an email like uh, 10 seconds after the, they get the email. It says, hey, I, I'm super stoked you checked out this product. Uh, you know, we also sell on Amazon. Here's the link directly to that product. Here's 30% mm -hmm. off. You know, you can automate all that stuff. So there's, there's so many cool things you can do there. Yeah, all right. that, that's, yep. yeah exactly. Because at a certain <laughs> point, you're just eventually just want to get that sale. Exactly. Like utilize that, squeeze that, squeeze that data as much as possible. All right, Kevin. So this is a very interesting question outside of Facebook. What's your favorite social network? You know, I know you're men mentioning TikTok. Yeah. Are you doing some, are, are you, are you, are you doing some, uh, some dances out there on TikTok? No, no, I definitely, definitely can't dance at all. I'm not <laughs> dance gifted at all, but I guess the other platform that we like to really still use is still Snapchat. It's a really great platform. Uh, I still talk to some friends on it too. It, but even then ad wise, I like it because like, you can still do a little more gray stuff like CBD and all these other yeah, products. Yeah, yeah so. right, right. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, LinkedIn is my is my biggest my my oh, new yeah, kind LinkedIn, of yeah. yeah. LinkedIn, it's it's. I keep telling people it's so like I I like I just got reached out, I I just got somebody re, uh, reaching out to me to go to possibly be on like a an CBS CNBC TV show like you know the the executive producer like not even an underling so. 
Like there's some really great opportunities on LinkedIn people like get involved there because you were able to interact with people. I mean, like, like uh, Barbara Corcoran, like uh, I had some, you know, chats with her on like there's, you can reach out to people on LinkedIn that you can't get anywhere else because people are in a business mindset. And not only that, but it's a little irritating, but on LinkedIn, you'll get a ton of like messages of people selling you stuff. Right. But it's kind yeah. of accepted. So it's actually a really good way also to, to lead gen and to connect with people. So um, that's, that's my favorite network. Amy, it's to you. What is, what is your favorite? You can't pick the ones that have already been picked. I think I know what you're going to guess or you're going to say, I have a guess. Well, my favorite, you mean my favorite social network well, social, outside of, outside yes, of Facebook? Yeah, outside of, no, not, you can't use, you can't do Facebook. You can't do Snapchat and you can't do uh, LinkedIn. Okay. They're, they're I already love chosen. Reddit. 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 It's, Reddit's it's, an interesting I, one. I have connected with so many awesome business owners. I have so much amazing software that, you know, I was able to be part of beta programs for um, great business owners having awesome conversations. I love Reddit. So you're the only, you're the only female, uh, user over uh, the age of 18 on like, you're, you're like, like the, the Reddit demographic is like 80%, like, uh, like men, uh, you know, men under 20, right. And, and trolls. We, yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I definitely think there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, you know, business professionals no, it's evolving. on yeah. Reddit. Well, I mean, the way I found out about Reddit was being in the cyber field, right? As I was working in cyber okay. and everybody was on Reddit. So anyone who's developing something, building something, they were on Reddit, right? Most of the time they're on Reddit to mess around and to make jokes and all of that kind of stuff. But it's really, it's, I've gotten so many great connections off of Reddit and, yeah. um, and I learned, I've learned so much, shared business ideas, um, startup stories, all kinds of cool stuff. So yeah, I really like Reddit. Yeah. That, that's given me a good idea for an infographic, right? For like, like the, 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 um, like memes for each social network. I've got, I've got a good idea. In my head now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Kevin, we're going to wrap up here. Uh, we always like to ask this question because we, you know, it's, it's uh, Amy and I, and, and probably a lot of people listening here are always like uh, listening to books, reading books, watching YouTube videos, you know, just consuming as much content as possible to, to, to get to that next level. Um, any favorite podcasts, motivational books, um, you know, audible, like anything that you're listening to consuming right now that you want to share that you feel like it has had a, a big impact on you. I'd like, um, what's that? David Goggins. Uh, do you guys know him? No. See, that's why we asked. Okay. <laughs> so he's like an ultra marathon runner and like ultra cyclist, motivational speaker, retired Navy SEALs. He has this book called like Can't Hurt Me. And it's probably like one of my most favorite books I've read. Like just super motivational, super like, like pretty much saying like, Hey, if you're complaining about life, it's probably your own fault. <laughs> like, right. Right. Yeah, so no, that's like, awesome. Cool. Yeah. See, I, now I get to add that to my list. Yeah. I love, I love that book. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Hey, Kevin, tell people where they can uh, get a hold of you, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, if you want them to reach out on, on social, oh, your website, yeah. your email, whatever you want to give out. Plug yeah. Away. So you can just come to voimedia.com. That's V O Y media.com or just Kevin at Voimedia. But I'm also on LinkedIn. I used, like, like I said, I used to use LinkedIn a lot, but that's the best place to reach me. Um, so yeah, voimedia.com. Yep. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Everybody who jumped in live, thank you guys so much. We really love when you guys are, are, are live uh, and asking questions. Uh, really appreciate that, guys. Um, we are doing this every Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific time. If you want to join us live, that is the place. Um, if you haven't yet already, uh, rate, review, subscribe to the podcast. Thank you guys so much for doing that. We're growing every single month. Um, Amy, I think we're going to break like 25,000 downloads this month, month nice. which is pretty epic. Um, you know, we've been doing every month it's going up. So that's what I like to see. Uh, we're not, we haven't got the, the hockey puck yet, you know, but uh, you know, uh, Kevin, you're an SEO guy. Go back and listen. We got Neil Patel. That was a, that was a big win. We were pretty happy that we got, we got Neil. Uh, we got Mike Michalowicz, if you haven't, uh, okay, if you haven't yeah, uh, heard Patel's of him. Neil Patel's huge. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy and, how you guys got him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I actually met him uh, down in LA at, at one of his, his uh, events. So I was like, Hey dude, <laughs> yeah, it's hard yeah. to say no in person. Right. So I kind of ambushed him like, come on, you want to be on there? He's like, all right, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. That, that was the secret, but you know, you don't ask if you don't get, or you don't get, if you don't ask, I said yep. that backwards. <laughs> so that, that's uh, you know, that's a, a big lesson guys ask what, for what you need. And, and uh, you know, there's so many people out there, especially who are uh, kind of, you know, who, who have leveled up or who are leveling up, who want to really pay it forward and help. So 
uh, don't ever, uh, you know, don't ever be afraid to ask because people are, are out there to help, especially nowadays. I feel like more and more people are like, I'm sitting at home, I'm bored. You know, somebody, you know, I need help. I'm never bored, but I know some of you there are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time on the Seller Roundtable. Thanks, Bye. guys. Thanks for tuning in. Join us every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for live Q&A and bonus content after the recording at sellerroundtable.com. Sponsored by the ultimate software tool for Amazon sales and growth, sellerseo.com and amazingathome.com.